capitalization rate, or cap rate, is the first term that's covered in virtually every book, course, or video that talks about investment real estate. Not only is it a straightforward formula, it's also talked about extensively within the real estate community. From an investor contemplating their first investment, all the way up to a large institutional investor, cap rates are universally acknowledged as a powerful metric within the industry. What I've found incredibly surprising, however, is the large debate about what a cap rate actually is. In one camp is the opinion that a cap rate is a rate of return. There are variations that get tossed around, such as it being an unlevered rate of return, or a going in rate of return, or in place rate of return, but the commonality is that a cap rate is an indication of yield. On the other hand though, are opponents who vehemently reject the idea that a cap rate is a rate of return. If there's a YouTube video that talks about cap rates, it's almost certain there'll be a comment about how cap rates are not a rate of return. If there's a post in an online forum, you'll see some variation of their, that comment on there too. It might be one person or a few people, but whoever's behind the anonymous accounts, they spend a considerable amount of time correcting others that a cap rate is definitively not a rate of return. It's almost become a rolling joke on some forums where a post comes up regarding cap rates and other members quickly chime in. So how can there be so much disagreement on a seemingly simple term? Well, to get to the bottom of this, I'm interviewing some of the smartest people in the real estate world. Included in the list are developers, investors, brokers, appraisers, economists, and a professor. One guest runs a $1 billion real estate portfolio. Another has three master's degrees and is an active developer. Another guest previously served as a commercial real estate subject matter expert for the Federal Reserve, while another one has written 56 books. Every one of the guests is a well-recognized expert in the field. I'm also including my research findings, including references from textbooks and guides from the various institutes, organizations, and universities that address cap rates. My goal with this documentary is simple. Find out the truth about what a cap rate actually is. I'm taking a very open-minded approach to this whole process, and there's a saying I've embraced that will form a central theme throughout this documentary. I'm not truly listening if I'm not willing to change my mind based on what the other person has to say. As we're going through this, I'd love to hear your comments on anything being said. I promise you one thing, there will be experts you fundamentally disagree with. I'm confident making this prediction as most of us have deeply entrenched beliefs on what a cap rate is. I'm not trying to change anyone's mind with this documentary, I'm simply conveying all the information I can and letting you make your own decision. If I could just ask one thing from you, it'd be to keep an open mind. Jumping into it, I asked each of the experts a few questions, but always started with the same one. What is a cap rate? And before going forward, take a moment to answer that question yourself. How would you respond if someone asked you that point blank? We'll dive deeper into the topic in a moment, but let's jump into how each of them responded. What is a cap rate? A cap rate is, uh, in my opinion, a measurement of market sentiment. It's uh, a way to quantify how hot or cold the commercial real estate market is at any point in time. Look, in simplistic terms, you take the property's net operating income divided by the asset value. So ultimately, it is a, a rate of return an investor is, is likely going to get when you without taking into account debt, but it's so nuanced and obviously it's, uh, it's not that simple. A cap rate, uh, by definition, I guess, is uh, the NOI that a property is producing, the net operating income divided by the purchase price yields a rate of return. I mean, in its most simple, I really only think about them in terms of like single tenant deals uh, where you're buying maybe, um, and, 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 it, and it measures the profitability and the risk. Well, I mean, a cap rate is simply is just the the perceived income off of what your the NOI you know divided by the 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 purchase price of the asset, right? So to give you what your percentage return is estimated to be. So, but that's a pretty you know I think as the point of this discussion is like, what does that really mean? Well, it it doesn't mean a lot, honestly, in my opinion. Okay, well, Chad, that uh, that is a loaded question. That's like like asking uh, a referee in football, what, what's a catch, right? Um, a lot of answers. T typically, cap rate is, um, is supposed to be a, uh, a return on investment. 
so it's supposed to be what is your your annual income going to be divided by your um, the price that you paid and it's supposed to be indicative of the return you're getting on your invested capital what is a cap rate I mean that's <laughs> that's a good question it's a loaded question um, there's a lot that goes into a cap rate it's simple and it's complex both uh, in simple terms you know it's it's a way to convert uh, income to value, right? Using direct capitalization. So it's um, it's as simple as taking your uh, your net operating income of your specific asset and dividing it by your cap rate, and that gives you your value. Yeah, a cap rate. What is a cap rate? So a cap rate, capitalization rate. Simply, it is the rate of return on your investment. So in simple terms, if you're going to buy a property for a million dollars cash and it's got a 6% cap rate, your NOI for the year will be $60,000. So a cap rate is simply a numerical description or a numerical relationship indicator between the income that can be achieved and the sale price that can be achieved. So how, I, how would I describe a cap rate? Uh, cap rate or capitalization rate is essentially a factor of the net operating income versus the actual sales price of the property. Um, the best way and easiest way I think for most laymen to understand it is if you were to pay all cash for this property, then your net income or net operating income would be the percentage of the cap, what the cap rate is. I define the cap rate as the trailing 12 months of net operating income divided by the purchase price. Well, a cap rate is, is just a tool uh, to try to think about, uh, I suppose, what one might be paying for a property or selling property and so on. It's simply a calculation at a moment, a given moment in time, uh, where we just take uh, the net operating income and divided by value, and, and we're showing a relationship between those two, the net income on the property and the value. So when you think about cap rates, and then we get in there, we throw in internal rates, returns, and we do cash flows, and we get all confused. Just think about when we're doing real estate in a cap rate, Are we? what, what does it relate to in terms of us, whether it's a stock or a bond? And so when you, when you invest in a bond, and you buy a hundred dollar bond and you pay 90 something dollars for it. Every part of that payment is a return of your investment in that bond, that, that, that uh, $95. And it's also a return uh, on that investment. Um, so it's a return on and of your capital where when you buy a stock, you're just getting paid a dividend and you got to eventually sell that stock. It's your return of your capital. So cap rates, when I describe cap rate is that total return gives you a return on and of your capital. So long to any notion of cap rates being a simple concept. Since the answer has varied quite a bit, I dug deeper and specifically asked if a cap rate was a rate of return. A cap rate is not a measurement of rate of return. It is simply a measurement of market sentiment. The rate of return is calculated in so many different ways, uh, but cap rate is not the way to calculate it. I generally, no. I mean, it could work out that way. Because if you first you got to define rate of return because we define a cap rate. And if the rate of return is again at that moment, or is it a discounted rate of return concept, internal rate of return? But if it's it's at that moment, then if the numbers worked out the same, that is the relationship of your of your value at that moment and your return on it, fine. Well, you know. A lot of people do believe that a cap rate is a rate of return, but, and I think there's, a, you know, for lack of a better word, I do think that it's a little bit of a misunderstanding, but generally speaking, the people that I'm speaking with that do believe that, you know, the cap rate is the ultimate rate of return, when we actually start discussing it, they're not looking long-term future. They're just looking at immediate, what's my return? Well, you know, I think that um, it is indicative of the performance of the investment. Right, and if you you're supposed to use net operating income, uh, capital expenses do not you know those are below the line, so they're not taken into consideration. So it, it really is not a total return on invested capital unless you added the um, the capital 
expenditures to the price that you paid. Um, and you also, there, there are so many different perspectives that people have. And I, I follow up on, on the, the transactions that we, we follow. I try to speak to the buyer and the seller. And, you know, the seller always says, oh, I sold it a four cap. And the buyer says, I bought it a six cap. So, you know, what's included? No. And its definition, a cap rate is not a rate of return. It can sometimes mathematically be the same formula and the same result. And I know that it is a short form way for people to think about rate of return. And that's good because it helps people be better at real estate. But in the end, it's just a demonstration of the relationship between the uh, income for the investment period chosen for analysis and the anticipated sale price. A cap rate is only looking at a static point of the purchase price as well as a rear negative look back. So it has no bearing on your future rate of return. Is a cap rate a rate of return? Um, yes and no. It's a cap rate is a rate of return for an asset specifically for a single period of time. It's not a rate of return for an investor. And there's a big difference there. So the rate of return for the asset, uh, when you're talking about a cap rate, it includes not only the rate of return, but the rate on the asset itself. So it's, it's a return of the capital and a return on the capital, all implied within a cap rate. So that includes a lot of assumptions within it, right? That includes the overall yield, which is the return on the asset and includes the capital recovery rate, which is, of course, the return of the capital used to purchase the asset. The, to, to keep it the simplest as possible is that capitalization rate is the percentage of rate of return on your investment. If you want to know the inverse of the cap rate, it's a stock multiple. So if you're confused, when someone buys a stock based on an earnings multiple of 19 or 20 or, you know, it's going down from there today. Um, but when they buy that, that multiple, again, is a return of my investment in that stock plus an anticipated return. Um, would I consider a cap rate to be a rate of return? Um, it's a form of a rate of return, but it is not the return, in my opinion. Um it, it's it's a uh, it's more of a metric to me. It's uh, because what the cap rate doesn't account for when you actually go into looking at what your rate of return on a property is. It's not going to account for the depreciation that you're going to be able to take and offset that. It's not going to account for any appreciation. And the cap rates typically talked about what is in place at that current time. So there could be rental ex escalations that actually increase the return that uh, that you're getting on the property. So. Is a vacant building a zero cap? It's probably not. If you buy a small bay industrial asset where, you know, a rent roll is all month to month, can you expect to hold that rate of return? No, you can't. So, you know, of course, a cap rate has value. But again, it's really one of the, uh, you know, it's one of the last things we look at when we do a sniff test. Again, a cap rate's just measuring one year of return and it leaves out a lot of factors. It's assuming you paid all cash. It's not really assuming maybe you had lease up costs or uh, you had CapEx expenditure uh, or maybe you had vacancy uh, that you have to, to lease up. So it, it really is such a simple model. It's like if you were to buy this with cash uh, and this is the return you got and you left out all these other factors, this would be the return. And so that's why I think it's probably controversial. There's a lot more great insights from these experts still to come, but before we get to it, let me share with you some of the key findings from my research. So I dug into a lot of sources and instead of going through them all in a lot of detail, I'm just gonna cover some of the key highlights from each of them. So starting first with the real estate development textbook by the Urban Land Institute. There's one part where they refer to the calculation, the value equals NOI divided by the cap rate, and they apl uh, apply that if the perceived risk per unit of return, and then they refer to that as the risk adjusted expected return. So a little bit of a lead in that this is a rate of return, at least according to the ULI. 
Uh, next, I've got a textbook from uh, Peter Lineman, uh, who I've been fortunate to interview before. He was tied up this summer, otherwise I would have asked him as well. Uh, he wrote a textbook, uh, Real Estate Finance and Investments. This textbook is widely used in the industry. And you'll see that in here, they actually uh, say that cap rates, rather than income multipliers, are generally quoted in real estate valuation analysis. The cap rate is expressed as a percentage, and it's the inverse or the reciprocal of the income multiple. Then there's another spot down here that says, uh, the real estate industry's usage of cap rates reflect its historic linkage to the bond market as real estate drives its income from future promissory income streams in the form of leases. And then it mentions, so just as the bond market commonly quotes yields as opposed to a multiple when valuing bonds, the real estate industry generally quotes cap rates. There is another section I'm going to get to online from the course that you could take with this, which goes into it a little bit more detail. But that's pretty much what it says about cap rates in that textbook. Another book that I tracked down, this was the original industrial real estate textbook from 1969, published at the time by the Society of Industrial Realtors. Uh, you might know them now. It's a Society of Industrial and Office Realtors. This textbook... Uh, I actually have the second edition of this as well, but I finally got the first edition. It mentions in here on cap rates that there are four decisions to be made before I and R can be ascertained. So that's income and the cap rate. And one of them that they mentioned is the rate of return on investment at which the income is to be capitalized. So pretty clear on this from this textbook in 1969 that a cap rate can be alluded to as a rate of return. One more note from the SIOR that I'll share with you a bit that makes this even more clear. But one more uh, textbook before we get to some of the online resources. This is from uh, the Sauter School of Business, University of British Columbia in Canada. And they actually give the formula, ROIs, return on investment, equals NOI divided by the purchase price. And then it clearly says here as well, this measure is also called the capitalization or the broker's yield. So this is a textbook from a university that has a pretty robust course on commercial real estate. They refer to it as a rate of return. Now let's hop over to some of the online ones. And this is where we'll find even more interesting ones. So here's a article from the CCIM Institute, which is one of the most popular uh, organizations to take commercial real estate uh, or investment real estate education. And right off the beginning, they, the author of this describes a capitalization rate as the overall or non-financed return on a real estate investment. So CCIM saying that it's a uh, clearly a rate of return. I'm going to come back to that article in a second here as well. Uh, but to the SIOR, which I had mentioned in that original textbook, they have their glossary where they call a capitalization rate. Uh, and at the bottom there, you'll see that uh, it's also called the free and clear return. Getting back to REFM, and this is the course that a lot of people take, especially in the analyst side of commercial real estate uh, that uses the one textbook I mentioned. Here's another clear one on how they describe cap rates. In essence, it's a weighted average of the return to debt and the return of equity. So this organization, which teaches a lot of students, again, is calling it a return on debt and a return on equity. We can go to the CoStar, which is arguably the biggest research company, at least for listings uh, in, in the world, publicly traded company, uh, very large. They call the, the cap rate, the income rate of return for a total property that reflects the relationship between one year's NOI and the total price or value. So again, massive company calling it a rate of return. CoStar owns LoopNet. And there is an article that I found uh, on on LoopNet where they had a uh, an expert come in and talk about this and you can see this sentence here a cap rate express expresses an anticipated annual return on an investment then we can go to some of the private uh, organizations this one's Green Street they put out a lot of great information as well and right here one of the first lines you'll read in the simplest sense a cap rate is the yield generated by a property or a group of properties we can go over to JP Morgan, large bank, 
And it, there's a part in here where it says uh, the cap rate is an assessment of the yield of a property over one year. Using yield and return interchangeably, there's a lot of evidence with these companies that it is a rate of cap rate is a rate of return. Uh, Investopedia has a long section on this, and they're, they start off by saying it's used in the world of commercial real estate to indicate the rate of return that's expected to be generated on a real estate investment property. We could go even ask ChatGPT, which is a large language model trained on a whole bunch of data, and it even says the same thing. It uh, capitalization rate essentially represents the rate of return an investor can expect to receive from an income producing property, assuming they purchased it with all cash, no financing. One last thing that I did as well as I purchased the appraisal of real estate textbook, which is put out by the Appraisal Institute of America. It's now on the 15th edition. I purchased the online version and I also purchased their dictionary. If we look at the dictionary or the glossary first, and we just look at capitalization rate, gives a value pretty consistent with what we've already heard, but it says, see also the yield rate. And the yield rate, as you can expect, talks about the return on the investment. Now, I want to go over to the appraisal of real estate guide itself, which is a 721-page textbook forming the foundation of how the vast majority of commercial real estate is going to get appraised. And they've got a chart here, terms and synonyms used in income capitalization approach. And in the one row where they have rates of return, they very clearly have the overall capitalization rate denoted by R0 uh, right in that category. So there's an overwhelming amount of evidence from all the textbooks, all the online resources, all the organizations and universities and associations that talk about cap rates that in one way or another all allude to it being a rate of return. There's also a considerable amount written about all the advanced mathematical models well beyond the scope of this documentary or the interests of the vast majority of people, myself included. If you want to dive deeper into the advanced models, I'd recommend starting with Elwood's formula and then moving into Ackerson's formula, which is also known as the Elwood without algebra formula. The premise here is that there's more than one way to figure out a cap rate. The most common way is to find and analyze comparable sales such that a market cap rate can be extracted. But there are other ways to do it, such as using the built up method, which can also get rather complex, but we can look at just two components for simplicity the risk-free rate, and a risk premium. An investor might use the three-month treasury bill for the risk-free rate and then add on an additional amount to account for their risk. There's also another technique called the band of investment method where a weighted average cost of capital factors in both the cost of debt as well as the required rate of return on equity. If this is starting to feel more complicated than just the original formula, here's a quote that sums it up. As revealed through dissection of Elwood's and Ackerson's formula, a cap rate is much more than merely the NOI divided by its selling price. I did try reaching out to the anonymous accounts, asking them to be interviewed, but I never did get a response. I'm sure we'll still see a comment below stating how a cap rate is not a rate of return though. But back to the experts, I took some of the key parts on how they use cap rates as part of their business. Let's jump into that. For me, a cap rate is purely like a sniff test. And, you know, the other thing is, too, is a cap rate is kind of taken into consideration that you're paying all cash, right? So um, that using leverage obviously changes your return metric, you know, in the positive way. So, um, you know, maybe if you're a pure cash buyer and, you know, in and you're all, only focused on that because of what you're putting your money into versus, you know, you're, what you're doing is... I think the cap rate is this. I think it's it, it's it, it's a great test to evaluate your alternative, right? So, it, I'm an investor, right? What is my alternative right now? Treasuries, right? So, um, I can go buy a five percent ninety day. I can go buy a ninety day treasury right now and get five percent of my money. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty much a guaranteed return on the deal, right? So you could just park your money there, make five percent annually, or you can go buy one of these net lease deals, you know where you know you go buy a Chipotle or a Starbucks or something like that you're going to be getting a five cap maybe sub five cap right so you better be paying all cash because you can't get debt to make it work uh, anymore so um, but I think the debate is is because 
ultimately everybody has different buying strategies and different capital structures that they're working with and that drives what a real cap rate is going to be for someone at the end of the day it, let's take an easy example uh, today i can buy something and nothing down why because somebody's desperate to get out of it and i take over their life nothing in it well how am i measuring my return on on an investment of zero Let's say I put $100,000 into something, a million, whatever it is, and I keep measuring it against that, but my equity keeps growing. And it keeps, hopefully, it keeps growing because the value of, in other words, the potential of a sale at much higher price goes up. I'm paying off the loan if there was a loan. And so now I've got a bigger, bigger, bigger potential equity position or dollars I could pull out, but I don't. But I keep measuring it against the 100,000 I put in initially, or the million, right? And that's a distortion. And people are kidding themselves thinking they're making this tremendous investment because you can't you can't measure it that way and be realistic because you're saying the opportunity cost, you tied up a million dollars in this property, right? Okay, and you measure against it, fine. But now as things have grown and it's worth that much more, you're tying up 2 million because you could get that much more out of the property. but some people don't measure it that way. They should measure it with what you could get at this moment. In my opinion, um, when it comes to cap rates, you know, the cap rates are a vital, vital tool for a quick snapshot on analyzing a property, whether or not it's worth the investment. Um, I think there's a lot more that goes into that than just a rate of return, because you're also looking at, you know, what are the other um, uh, potentials for appreciation, retenanting, um, adaptive reuse, traffic counts, traffic generators, all that goes into it. But a cap rate will give you a really good quick snapshot of whether or not you need to invest more time into the analysis to determine whether you want to make that acquisition or not. So I think it's a very good tool to have. It's probably one of the first things I look at when I'm looking at investment properties. Um, and then I start analyzing the rest. And then overall capitalization rate especially allows us to think broader and think in bigger terms of just the relationship between the income. A lot of people mul buying multifamily these days, they're just waiting for two, three months down the road where they can increase those rents. And everybody knows that's the plan. Even the tenants know that's the plan. And so if you're looking at a rate of return, that doesn't even come close to capturing what that expected rate of return for that deal is. But we use the overall capitalization rate to represent the relationship and the risk level on that one year stabilized NOI cash flow in order to make comparisons and decisions easier. And the only way to really understand what return you're getting is to analyze the whole picture, not just the cap rate and the cash flow, but what's the appreciation, what's your cost of sale, what's going on in the marketplace itself, and then look at the alternative investments. Is there any better out there? Yeah, so in the market is what bears that cap rate, that capitalization return. Excuse me. Um, and of course, the California market's different than the Texas market, than the um, the South, you know, whatever the South might be, whether it's the Carolinas or Florida or whatever, uh, and certainly in the Midwest. I mean, a deal that you would find that would be priced at a four and a half cap in California might be a six and a half or a seven cap in Ohio. Look, how much value is a cap rate? Well. I there's two sides of your brain, right? There's a left side of your brain, which is a scientific part of your brain. And that's your, your logic and your sense um, in, in how you analyze and do the theoretical analysis of the property. And that is, will create the, the estimate of value for a property. But then there's a right side of your brain. That's the creative side of your brain. And that will help create an opinion of value. So using the right side of your brain and the creative aspect, you can then say, well, if I go and look at a property that may be at a very low cap rate and I can introduce an ability to, to demise a space into multiple bays or I can create a new type of use for a property or I can create a, a new asset class within it, 
or there's underutilized um, floor area ratio, you can increase the density of a site, whatever, then using that creative side of your brain, then the cap rate becomes higher, your return becomes higher, and your uh, overall performance of the assets. So it bears a lot of weight going into it, but it's more important it matters the, uh, what assumptions are going into that. When an investor is buying a particular building, are they ascribing a value to it? Because the problem is that a cash investor is only willing to pay X. But somehow, if you have debt and you have good debt, you have positive leverage, that investor is willing to pay X plus 2. And so what it really comes down to is that that investor is valuing their cash flow and their projected future returns. And so cap rates are incredibly important for understanding what your cash on cash return is going to be. You know, it's all about what is the, uh, the price per square foot. You can never change that. Um, if you're identifying a small bay asset where, you know, we've been through this where you're inheriting bays, small bays at $400 a month, $500 a month in rents, and, and you can see the demand signals are there that those units could be rented, you know, without any TI or renovations at seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month in rents, you know, does it mean you shy away from that three, four, five cap deal when you know a six cap can become a zero and it equally can become a seven, eight, nine, ten, um, you know, particularly in the uh, in the cocoon of industrial that, that, that we operate in. Then you look at something like unlevered yield on cost, which is kind of what you're building towards, which is like, what is the rate of return I'm going to get after everything, the purchase price, the fees, the uh, the leasing costs, the CapEx expenditures, all of those things, my all-in cost on the deal, what am I going to be returning to investors um, once all that's been done? And so most properties, again, unless you're buying a single tenant deal with a really long lease on it, where there's not much to do but collect rent, it's just not, uh, like maybe it's a rate of return, but it's just not something that you kind of bet the farm on. Like I said, again, um, you know, a zero cap could turn into a 10 cap if you just lease it up. Uh, again, it doesn't take into consideration growth. It doesn't understand maybe you have the best location in town. And even though you're buying, even in today, like let's say you went and you could buy the Empire State Building at a really deep discount at like, uh, that's probably a bad one, but because it's office, but the best property in the world, it's not assuming that the next lease turn in two years, rents might double or triple and now you're in a whole new world. And so if you were just to say, well, I can't buy something on a two cap, you're not paying attention that three years from now, you're going to have this huge opportunity in front of you. So it can be a little misleading. So we would say, what's the unlevered yield on cost going to be when we've executed our plan? And that matters to us a lot more. And then we build a plan around that, not how do we buy a two cap deal? Looking at absolute numbers is not really indicative of anything unless you know the environment in which that number is existing, what's happening around it, what are the market factors that are impacting that number, and then how does that number compare and contrast with where those numbers have been in, in, in the past? I could tell you back in 1984 when I started, the average cap rate on multifamily properties in New York in Manhattan was about 12.6%. And everybody says, wow, people must have been making so much money. And I'm like, no, you were borrowing at 13. So it, it's all relative. You have to look at the whole picture to really understand the market. Uh, there's, there's a lot of confusion from people who uh, are unsure why the debt service isn't included in the cap rate calculation. When they, people will ask, well, if you take the net income and you divide that by the purchase price, is the net income before or after the mortgage payment? And the answer is it's before the mortgage payment. And the reason that's the case is it's, it's by design. Uh, different capital structures would produce different cap rates for the same piece of real estate. And if cap rate is being used to measure the value of the real estate, you can't place the financing in the middle of the equation because everybody will finance it differently. Some people might pay cash, some people might put 10% down, 20% down, 50% down, 75% down. Some might get a bridge loan with a financing component of renovations that are covered after the fact. 
So the, the financing cost is a massive variable between buyers. And so if every buyer slash borrower is different, uh, a cap rate would be inconsistently applied if it included debt service. So by that very definition, it tells you that cap rate could not be a measurement of returns because every investment is financed differently. It is only a way to compare one parcel of real estate's performance to another parcel of real estate's performance by way of measuring market sentiment for that particular type of property. To summarize what a cap rate really is, it is a single period rate of return on an asset using a direct capitalization method. It's a way of converting cash flows into asset value. But in doing that, there are a lot of assumptions that go into creating what that net operating income is going to be. And looking at it from a technical standpoint, you can look at the existing cash flows and you can look at you know, the rent roll, look at the vacancies, and you can look at the operating expenses and compare that to the value. But then you have to also look at what are the opportunities for the asset? How can you reposition that asset by either demising the space or finding a change of use uh, or adding creativity to a potential tenant base for that asset. And in doing so, you may be able to create a, a higher net operating income, which will create a higher value and will then affect the cap rate. And all of the assumptions that go into a cap rate need to be analyzed by taking the next step, really, and that's looking at a multi-period uh, investment analysis and, and comparing, of course, your internal rate of return or your modified internal rate of return and comparing that back to the cap rate of a property. And you should also be looking at the cap rate of a property against, of course, the cost of borrowing to determine whether or not you have positive leverage or negative leverage on, a, on an asset. Uh, but don't let that stop you. Even if you have negative leverage going into an asset, there may still be opportunity through, through repositioning uh, the asset. It's been quite the journey getting this far, and based on everything we've went through, I think there are a number of possible conclusions. First, cap rates are a rate of return. A number of experts went on record saying exactly this, and the body of knowledge on commercial real estate supports this assertion. Number two, cap rates are not a rate of return. Given the amount of assumptions that need to be made and the fact that real estate is not particularly stable or predictable, it might be safe to say that there are better metrics to evaluate returns. And third, regardless of what a cap rate is, it's just not worth arguing about. There are strong arguments that can be made either way, but ultimately it's up to each individual investor to determine whether an investment makes sense. Determining the cap rate can help in that process, but it's only one step of many. Taking all this into account, I can sum up where I stand very simply. I'm not going to use or refer to a cap rate as a rate of return, but I also won't argue with anyone who feels otherwise. This is a bit facetious, but there are a couple of pop references about how I feel about the debate. The first is from Happy Gilmore where he was corrected on what type of jacket was given out at the Masters. Gold jacket, green jacket, who gives a shit? Or this one from Don Draper. I'm not here to tell you about Jesus, you already know about Jesus. He either lives in your heart or he doesn't. But instead of ending on quotes from fictional characters, I'm going to end with a story that Dr. Levine told me as I think it very neatly sums up how we all run the risk of occasionally overcomplicating things. Just before I play the clip, give me a thumbs up if you liked this documentary or a thumbs down if you didn't. And any and all comments are also welcomed. But now with the final word, here's Dr. Levine. You know, there's all the jokes around about mom and pop, you know, and the, the sophisticated young man from university comes home and says, you know, mom and dad, you, you've been doing it wrong all, all the time. You know, you got your store and you and you got your little uh, investments upstairs with you renting some apartments and so forth. And, and you think you're making money. Let me explain it to you, says the son or daughter, right? You didn't use all these right tools. And and so they explain it and so forth. And, and uh, the, the story goes, of course, that um, they finally said to the son, wait a minute, son. You see, we, here's what we do. We got these two boxes. This is cash we get in today from the store and from rentals. And this is cash going out. 
That's how we do it. And then again, the child laughs and says, oh, I got to teach you. And once again, the parents say, you know, let me ask you something. Where are you now? He's in graduate school. He said, did you go to undergrad? Of course, Dad. You paid for it. You and Mom paid for it. He said, well, okay, so we paid for undergraduate school. You're in graduate school. Do you owe anything? No, don't owe anything. You got a car to drive? Yeah. Do you have a place? Yeah. You say, so then our system works pretty well, doesn't it? 